take the fat out. With long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and, and in you all. But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Amen. Apostle Paul wants this. For us to stand before God for the preservation of life. In other words, for us to walk worthy of our invitation in which we are called a worthy walk. Not a walk as we think, as we want, as we imagine, as we think of. Because from the moment something happened and our lives changed, from that moment on, which is the starting point of a new life, from that moment and afterward, we must walk according to the rule of faith, according to the rule of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Exactly like that. And this way, my brethren, isn't a human way or according to our own opinion, but it's specific. Firstly, with all loneliness. You know what this means, all loneliness? In other words, in every detail in your life, in every thought of yours, any action, what? Firstly, you must have is humility, so we can find grace, because with the grace of Christ we can't do anything, nothing at all, nothing. And when he says humbly, doesn't say bit, with all lowliness, with all humility, in every detail of your personal life, so we can find grace by God. A humble person is humble, humble, humble with his wife, humble with your husband, humble with your children, humble with the younger, humble with the elderly, humble when you exit, humble when you enter. A humble person says, I don't know, not I the Lord, we will pray, we will wait, we will ask. How can I know? Firstly, I can't, how can I? Secondly, what should I do? Thirdly, and in words and in actions humble, and in thoughts and in propositions and what you say and what you listen to, with all loneliness. Secondly, gentleness, because loneliness comes, goes together with gentleness. Learn from me that I am lowly in the heart. You cannot be humble and not lowly. And you cannot be gentle if you're not lowly and humble. Only, division comes only from pride. Did you have a fight with someone? You're prideful, repent for it. You're angry, you've got pride, repent. But I'm right. You are right, but you lost it. Because you're not humble. Because you're angry, your heart is boasting. It's full of pride, my brethren. We must be careful in our lives of these characteristics if we want our prayers to be heard. And every time when I get angry, every time I think that I am right, every time my heart is exalted, I say, Lord, I just lost your grace. You know what it is to lose Christ's grace, especially Always, but especially when we've got serious personal problems, petitions. I usually think 
and so I must be found in a in good surroundings surroundings where there are no germs when I'm found in intensive care sometimes we are in intensive care do you know that in intensive care because we need healing you know when someone's sick and he enters intensive care they put on special shoes on you, mask. That's how we must be. Special clothes on. That's how we must be in holiness and pureness, protected from germs. And our first petition is pursue peace with all people in holiness, with all humility, with all nobleness and gentleness, worthy of the calling in which you were called. And only that, with long suffering also. Not only suffering for myself only, but to others. In other words, be patient with other people. But you know what he said to me? Be patient, long suffering. I'm saying this for me now. And the word of God is for each one of us separately. Not for me to think that that brother is not patient. I'm lost then. If I think of you when I'm in the Bible, then I've lost myself. When I hear the word of God, I have to think of myself so I can win myself. These are commandments of God. And the mysteries of the Holy Spirit. So you can obtain God's blessings with full humility, all manliness, gentleness, long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Never say, I can't stand him, I can't bear him. I can't bear my wife anymore. What are you talking about? I can't bear that man, that elder, that deacon, that pastor. Never say this. The Bible says the commandment is bearing with one another in love, all of them, and with love. It's necessary, my brethren, for this to be our work. So we can be useful, chosen vessels in the hands of God for the preservation of life. You can't be useful for the preservation of life. You can save him who is not innocent by the pureness of your hands. What pureness of hands are to me when I get angry, when I do not bear my brethren in love. But I'm not patient and when I don't endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit. You know what endeavoring is? So I strive, I labor to keep the unity of the Spirit in a bond of peace. Me with you, you with the other person, all of us to be united in the Spirit. Endeavor, try, strive, labor to keep the unity of the Spirit in a bond of peace. Because this cannot be cut off because all the church, the body of Christ, you can't leave one hand paralyzed. We can't leave the hand paralyzed, hanging there. The eye, we must take care of it. One eye can't look in one direction, the other eye can look in the other direction. God doesn't want this. We must endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace and in the bond of peace. Have peace with all people. Blessed are the peacemakers. A time will come and you must find peace. And a time will come when you must offer your good services to keep peace with other people. A nice walk. Worthy of the calling of Christ. A nice walk. And let's never forget to read this so we can do it. Let's never forget to turn our cautiousness to the Word of God, especially to this part, so we can be chosen vessels for the preservation of life, so our prayers can be heard, so we can have good results in our lives, good results in our lives, blessed results in our lives. For us to say things and for God to do it. For us to say things and for things to happen so that prayers can be heard. Because if I don't walk with all loneliness, gentleness, 
with being self-willing, being with one another in love, then I pray and my prayers are not heard. It's awful, isn't it? For us to pray and for our prayers not to be heard. For us to ask and not receive. Worthy of the calling. For you to work worthy of the calling with which you were called by Christ. So, we can all be one body. All one body, one spirit. And to have one hope, eternal life. All of us, all of us. First of all, my wife and I. The elders and I, the deacons and I, the brethren and I, one spirit, one body, one hope. And then, in our lives, there will be one Lord. It won't be my Lord and your Lord. Because if I want other things, then we've got two Lords. I will ask for it to rain, and you will ask for the sun to come up. Because we have different opinions. I'm a farmer, and you're whatever. And you don't want rain, but I want rain. But my brethren, I can't want differently. I can't want... I cannot want things that are different from you in the church. We all have one spirit in the church. One hope. We want the rain, the late rain to come. So, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and God, and Father of all, He will be above all, through all, and you all. One God, who is above us all, who worked through us all, and in us all. I'm going to say this again. One God who will be above all, He will be working through all of us, and He will be in all of us. And this is the Church of Christ. Holy, apostolic, without a spot, speck, or a blemish. Amen.